Hello, everybody. My name is Dulgun Dorslam, and I'll be presenting to you on drug-induced liver injury compound detection using convolutional neural network. These are the table of contents, introduction, data set, uh, introduction, method, and results. Before we move on, I want to introduce to you our problem statement and why I chose to conduct an experiment on this topic. My experiment involves around liver injuries. As a multifunctioning organ, liver uh, is responsible for not only breaking down a foreign object that enters our body, the liver also controls our energy management, is a part of our immune system, and even controls our hormone management. So it's a very vital organ that controls our survivability. Because it's an organ that deals with a lot of foreign objects, it's susceptible to a lot of injuries and prone to uh, compromises. One of the main compromising uh, factor or a contributor to this compromise is an uh, injury called drug-induced liver injury. Whether from a chemical structure of the drug itself or an environmental factor such as patients' uh, characteristics or environmental factors, prescribed drugs are one of the most largest contributors to drug-induced liver injury. In this project, we will be looking at Dilly cause due to drug chemical drug induced uh, drug induced liver injury due to drug chemical toxicity. We will be looking at chemical structures of the drugs to determine whether that drug will be uh, drug inducing or non drug inducing. No, Dilly injury inducing. Excuse me. Similar research have been taking place before. While using drug chemical structure was represented through molecular fingerprints or embedding method methodologies. For example, a research on using molecular fingerprint embedded features to predict the drug induced liver injury potential in drug was done by FO, uh, showed a great result with over 90% accuracies and above 95% AUROCs. This task is important not only to preventing drug induced liver injury for patients, but also for drug development process and pre -market marketing screening. Now, unlike this previous met uh, methodologies, I wanted to use molecular structure shape as an input file for our prediction. People use molecular fingerprints to look uh, or a lookup table to describe the molecule. I wanted to know if it was possible to take a picture of a molecule and feed it into a convolutional neural network to see if it was able to predict uh, the drug-inducing nature of the compound. So, for example, I would say dilly positive acetaminophen, a very popular drug-induced drug -induced liver injury compound, while amikacin, uh, which is a bacterial uh, drug which does not induce liver injury. So I would take a picture like this to the uh, convolutional neural network. For data data set introduction, I have used a data set called DLIST. Now it's a data set created during the research product project named Drug Induced Liver Injury Severity and Toxicity DLIST, binary classification of 1279 drugs by human hepatotoxicity. The data set was created uh, contained in which 768 were DILI positive and 511 were DILI negatives. In total, 1,279 drugs were created in DILIs. I'll be only using 1,139 uh, drugs as it was only those drugs that were available for me to convert it into a picture of a drug molecule, such as the one that is shown in the right. I have used... So... Each drug name were passed through a Cactus NCI API, which in turn provided a SMILES representation of the drug. SMILES representation is basically a letter a representation of molecular structure of that drug, such as here as shown. By using Arctic library in Python, I was able to convert these SMILES code to mobile block representations which was then converted into RGB three-colored, three-channel image of the chemical itself. Now, stratified split ensured a clean and even distribution of negative and positive labels, and training and test data set were divided into 80 and 20 ratio. A training data set was then further divided into training and validation with 80 to 20 percent. Now, uh, for pre-processing, no other uh, augmentation or transformation were applied to the picture files except for the resizing of the picture to 240 to 120 pixels.
For the reason for uh, no uh, augmentation or noise was added was because we can ensure that the image, a new image or new chemical, when it is being added to the model, we can ensure that the format can be similar or exactly the same as the every other data set samples. Hence, no augmentation or transformation was added to the picture. As we can see here, we have a methods and I have used convolutional neural network. Specifically, what I have used was I used a convolutional block, which is a convolutional layer stacked on top of each other. So three stacked convolutional layer and a linear layer, basically a very simplified version of feed for neural network and use the sigmoid to determine whether that results were daily positive or daily negative. So the picture with three channel would go into this model and be determined uh, positive or negative. Uh, going deep into what exactly my convolutional block was, I used the convolutional block and really uh, activation function to reduce the negatives of that uh, convolutional block output. I used the max pulling to reduce the dimensionality. So first, uh, the image would have 120 to 120 pixels. Then I would use max pulling to reduce that dimensionality. And then I would then use a batch normalization to standardize our inputs and repeat this process three times to uh, and increase the channel every time. So first I have three channel. I use convolutional layer to increase th uh, to 32, 64, and 128, <coughs> which this, which then is converted into, uh, not converted, flattened and uh, inputted into a feedful, basic feedful neural, neural network. I have used the binary cross entropy, which compares each of the predicted probabilities to actual class of output, which can be either zero or one, since we are using a binary classification. I've also used atom optimizer. I didn't tinker with the hyperparameters such as weight decay and so on and so forth. And I only used learning uh, rate and others were all default values. For learning rate, I found out that uh, 0 0.0005 or one to the power of uh, 10 minus five were the best learning rate as anything uh, more than this value were leading to overfitting and anything below was leading to to uh, extreme amount of uh, training time. Excuse my stuttering. Uh, so for the results, I have ran it for 30 epochs with 128 small mini batches. The data uh, shown on the left side, the graph shown on the left side represents the red line as the training loss and blue line as the validation loss. As we can see, around epoch eight was the uh, state where the validation loss was at the lowest. As we determined that the best epoch was eight, and if we can see the accuracy as well, the training data set goes to 99.97% immediately overfitting and uh, biasing on the training data set, while the validation is 61% accuracy on the eighth epoch with the loss of 6.69. The flattened result went through a lot of conversions and due to that, the result test was that it, the accuracy was not that high with 0 0.57, with a loss of 0 0.686, with AURC and AOPRC both showing around 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 results. One might say, oh, we're looking at this AURC graph that this model uh, does not know or is incapable of determining whether a compound is daily positive or daily negative. 